Hey there, welcome to another Lemon Commodore 64 play guide and review. In this week's show, we'll be taking a look at Space Taxi, developed by Muse Software and released to the public in 1984. As you can see, this game was produced by John F. Kutcher, and on the title screen, we can push forward on the controller, and from there, we can see the high scores with some music. And it's surprising that there's no music on the title screen itself, but we do find that on the high score table. By pulling back on the controller, we can also check out the instructions, which will give us a few hints and tips as well. And you can see there are 24 different screens in this game, and each one of those is entirely different. So let's hit that fire button, let's return to that title screen, which has to be said is pretty basic, but this was 1984. By pressing that fire button, we can change the number of players, up to four players can play alternately, not on the same screen at the same time, unfortunately. Uh, we can also change our selection of job. For this, we will go for the 24 hour shift. This game we play as a taxi driver and we must successfully land this taxi. The passenger will then give us a destination and all we have to do is to get there. When you complete each screen, the passenger will then request one of those landing pads, usually landing pad one, and you have to fly there and drop it off, and then collect any others which need transporting. By pressing that fire button at just the right moment, we can lower our landing gear, but unfortunately we cannot move up and down and thrust up and down with our landing gear out, but we can move left and right. So once that landing gear is down, all we can do is to make a landing and now we can move on to the next level. At this stage, the game is very easy and very linear and it's very easy to figure out what we must do. And having collected a number of these guys now, all we need to do is to port them from A to B and collect the reward. You can see the cash bonuses appearing on the very far right in that corner. And as soon as we touch down, we will get whatever cash is remaining. But if we touch down wildly, then that cash will disappear and we'll get nothing. You can also see a fuel counter in the very centre of that screen and on later levels we'll have to top that up and you can see blinking lights, they will flash red if we make a crash landing and they will flash different colours depending on the scenario and usually if they're flashing blue it means everything is okay so in the bottom left corner you can see our current cash we now have $72 and 31 and of course that drops into plus figures as soon as we drop someone off and above that we have our lives and extra lives can be collected at score checkpoints The taxi itself has some inertia and some gravity will take effect every time you try to make a landing and so you have to make those perfect. And if I had to liken this to some kind of game, I'd say the thrust series where we have to use gravity to our advantage is something like this game, except instead of capturing a flying orb, no, this time we have to capture passengers. And it's unusual for 1984 for speech to be in a game, and speech in a game really started with games like Impossible Mission and things like that which really had impressive speech and then that became very expensive and there was a speech blackout and so we got games like Robocop and Ghostbusters which did feature a tiny little bit. In this 
game, the characters' voices will be changed at random, and some of them sound like white guys, and even one of them sounds like a black guy, and so each character has its own random personality, and it's great to hear that. And you can see our fuel tank is running low, so sometimes priorities in this game really matter, and so let's just drop this guy off pretty quickly and dive back to that fuel. As soon as that guy appears, then the money counter will start to tick down, so you have to drop him off pretty quickly. And the game gives the player precious little time between pick up and drop off to collect any extra fuel. So you'll really have to be running on your best behaviour, because if you crash into anything, of course, you lose that life. And you may have noticed that we actually dropped cash refueling, and so we've dropped back to 136 dollars in the pocket and of course the aim of this game is to accrue as much cash as possible and hopefully we won't get wiped out and I have been at least halfway through this game but it gets fiendishly difficult later on so I'd say the learning curve is great at this point it's again very linear and it's very easy to figure out what we must do and the speech really helps but if we forget there is also an instrument panel on the bottom and that will say exactly what the people say, so up oh, please appears, that means we can make a safe exit. The screen is generally more interesting, although I find this screen one of the most boring in the entire game, basically because it repeats Even though this is one of my least favourite levels, it's still not hard, and usually, but not always, a new person will appear on a completely different landing pad, which means it's usually best to take off and start heading out there, and then as soon as they appear, you can make a quick landing. And they sometimes appear on the same landing pad, and if you touch down using your landing gear on top of those, or even if you just use your thrusters on top of those, then you'll kill, unfortunately, the guy waiting to be picked up, and another one will have to be respawned. So sometimes if you land on the respawn point, sometimes they will get killed automatically, and that really is annoying, but I've certainly had that happen to me, so it's possible to memorise where they respawn, and to make sure that you touch down pretty much in the centre of any landing pad, and that saves them walking across. I'm just going to speed up this footage now because of course it does take some time to play this level and I think you have to pick up maybe eight guys and maybe nine guys actually from every single one of these branches and then you will eventually get the command to go in the upwards direction and skip through to the end of that level and I like the variety on offer at this stage but I think this level in particular could have been done a little bit quicker. But you can see that money really piling up there. We now have over $200. And the fuel doesn't really need to be thought about unless there is fuel to be picked up on that level. And at this stage, you really don't have to think about fuel again. you thought Pong was dead by 1984, well think again, this time it's a little bit different because instead of a paddle we actually get a spacecraft and we have to crash land and make sure that we don't lose our fare. But you can see that guy was down to two dollars anyway, so sometimes crash landing, sacrificing a number of dollars isn't so bad. But of course the inertia makes these levels just that bit more tricky and I always lose a life on this level, no matter what I try to do, and sometimes it's very difficult. But if the beach level reminded me of Lemmings on the Amiga, then games like this certainly remind me of those cutesy games that appeared later on, and it's great that ingenious ideas like this certainly appear, and it wouldn't have surprised me if there were two bats either side of the screen, which knock this ball around. 
but unfortunately there isn't but what there is is a great opportunity to master these great controls and perhaps master that inertia as well because i guess that's the hardest trickiest part of this game and that's what this game is all about Sometimes you can release your landing gear pretty early and crash land and that won't harm the fare of course and that ship can withstand some knocks but sometimes it's best just to release that landing gear at the last moment because if you release too late and crash that into the ground then you'll blow up and there's quite a lot which will make you blow up in this game of course crashing into any of these pads or any of these walls will make us instantly disappear but in this case some of those are teleports and it's great that this idea is in the game it's probably the only level which uses teleports but with every new level it introduces something new to the player and the difficulty on offer is just about right Although this isn't Rescue on Fractalus for 1984, it was still a great game. It certainly wasn't a type-in adventure, and this game required good dexterous controls on the controller. Unfortunately, in 1984, there weren't that many great controllers, and anyone who remembers trying to play these games on an old rusty 8-bit controller, like the old Atari one, with that round fire button and the quite dodgy sticky forward controller, then, well, that's pretty difficult. I guess you can always use keys to play this as well and on this crap version that I'm playing at the moment on the emulator it actually saves our high scores which is great if only that was available on a real 64 but we're actually using this version at the moment so maybe it did but all I can say is it's great to advance from level to level and even that cutscene from level to level is pretty funky and reminds me of cutscenes in games like Whizball but now we come to one of the hardest levels for me in the entire game I really do not like this level and sometimes I've managed to get through it quite quickly and sometimes it's taken me ages in this level all you have to do is to trigger those switches of course and that will release a door and getting to a destination sometimes is very easy but that depends on who's having to memorize all these switches so as you can see just trying to get to one of the guys I'm um, having to well unfortunately die because I crashed into that scenery it's so easy to be impatient in this game and crash into that scenery and I've done that countless times so this game really rewards the player if they take their time and of course try to conserve of course that fuel under normal circumstances you can survive every single level with just the stock amount of fuel unless as i say it has one of those fuel canisters on the screen and then sometimes you might have to top up but in this particular level all we have to do is to find our way to that landing pad and all we have to do is to get into number two that would be pretty easy but number two has a double barrier and for some reason i can't actually work out how to get through that using this particular method and well you'll have to work out the correct combination so as i said this is probably my most infuriating level of them all so what i'm actually going to do is speed this game up otherwise it can get pretty boring Now the trial and error comes in as we try to negotiate these doors, they aren't really traps but they are doors of doom because of course we cannot collide into those and having found our way it's certainly not easy to fight our way all the way back. Sometimes you have to go the long way and to go around the long way but you can see I've managed to open up one of those doors and now finally we get to drop off our passenger.
Space Taxi was developed by Muse Software, which comprised of John F. Kutcher and Silas Warner. And this game was coded by John F. Kutcher. He also released Rescue Squad for Muse in 1983 and went on to Castle Wolfenstein, the perhaps the original, which was an underworld type dungeon clone for Muse in 1983. And they also produced a sequel to Castle Wolfenstein and Silas Warner created that. But in this game, Silas Warner created the music and the only music that I could find is the jingles when you complete a level and on the high score table but I wouldn't say that this game is famous for its music the sound effects are virtually non-existent except for the opening and closing doors which on this level is incessant and sometimes we'll get a beep warning when that fuel is out and if we crash land but the sound effects certainly make way for great voices and I'd say it's those voice samples which really make this game and make it terrific. <laughs> On to my absolute favourite level of this game so far, at least as far as I've managed to get. And that's Crossfire, where we have to get to our destination under fire. And complete random, sometimes they will fire straight through that scenery, straight through that landing pad, and straight through us. So sometimes you have to watch those angles, and sometimes things are possible, and sometimes they aren't. So you have to really get really close to our passenger, but of course don't crash into him. And it doesn't help because these landing pads are pretty narrow. This level reminds me of Beachhead, and instead of gunning down some ships in a harbour, now we're gunning down a space taxi. I think our taxi is very well drawn, and when the legs extend it looks almost like a bug, and when it's flying around I think it still looks like a car. So in this particular level, the highest platform is platform 4, and as long as we don't have any calls to or from platform 4, we should be okay. As long as we, of course, preempt all this firepower. Pad five, please. Yeah, these really do take on human characteristics. So let's dive in there. Let's grab that fair, and each fair will be almost at random. Some of those are in the $15 range, some of those start at $8 or even $6, so you have to be on the move. Unfortunately, we have a fair hailing from pad 4, and that means disaster, but in this case it leads to the exit. Sometimes I've been certainly known to be blown up on the exit door. Just like that, we have to be very careful in full speed as we try to exit each level. And I have got a number of screens further than this in this game. And this is shooting stars, and again you have to preempt where those things are going to land. And I've never got killed on this particular level, except on this particular playthrough. After this, we find a magnets level, which counteracts gravity and makes flying really difficult, but it's really fun. After that, we find one of the greatest and hardest levels, that's the black hole, and that will try to drag our craft to the centre of that screen. And if we're above that, it will drag us down to the platform, but if the platforms are below that, it will try to lift us off before we even touch down. So the difficulty curve does increase with every screen, and the player will have to have dexterous controls and a good controller if they want to get the most out of this game. And later on there are very fiendish puzzles and traps which open and close, and the player really does have to be pixel perfect at this point. This level reminds me of 1985 by Mastertronic, 
as we try to get into those caves and try to grab things and counteract gravity as well. And 1985, well, that was a Luna Land type game. We had to collect fuel, look at that, very close there. But in this game, we don't really have to collect fuel. You can see it appears on that screen, but all we have to do is to get to that exit. But, well, unfortunately for me, I'm actually going to run out of fuel. And that's one of those things that I didn't actually predict. If I'd known that, maybe I'd have gone down and picked some up. But I do rate this game highly, and it's no coincidence that this is actually being currently played in the Lemon Commodore 64 International Games competition. And there, many guys from all over the world are battling it out. And I really do think it was a great game, well vaulted in. There is also a version on the Amiga, Space Taxi, and even Space Taxi 3 appeared on the Amiga. But I think this original Commodore 64 version, with or without fuel, really does stand up. And it even gives us an extra chance, but unfortunately for me, with no lives remaining, this is as far as I'm going to get on this playthrough. And I have been a little bit further, but as I say, this has been played in the Lemon 64 competition. So if you fancy your chances and your skills at this game, then come along to Lemon 64 and try to get on that high score table. Well, we have managed to get on the high score table, but unfortunately it's nowhere near my two highest scores for this game. So that will have to do for this player guide. Hope to see you again for another one sometime soon. Thank you.